Hey guys, welcome back to another great game of CDH. Today's game features three new players from our very own Discord. Also, if you're interested in playing with us, hop on our Discord. We have an ever-growing community and would love to talk MTG or whatever strikes our fantasy. And another benefit is we often let people know when we play and would love to meet some new people. All right, block there, kill that. Oh, that is trample. Guess I'm just dead on board. First up is Shadow of the Storm, and he's playing everyone's favorite new frog king, Grolnok. This is a Simic self mill less that aims to cast his commander and mill until he can't mill no more. With Grolnok, you get to cast your Thassa's Oracle or Labman, along with all your other goodies that you exile. It aims for either a Hermit Druid or a Cephalid Illusionist to mill himself out. Next up is Hidden Planet X and Belbe. This is Big Mana Belbe and is copied from the 99's list which I'll have linked in the corner, and is also a great reference. Patrick really goes into a lot of detail explaining the deck. In the third spot, we have English NH, and a new commander pairing that I've never played against before. Dargo Jessica is meant to be an insanely fast combo list that aims to infinitely cast and sacrifice Dargo to kill everyone with a single Jessica cast. This is a cool deck option for those that want to stay away from the four or five colors. And sometimes just casting Dargo and then giving it triple strike with Jessica is enough to win on its own. And bringing up the rear, we have Porgus D. Jake and another new partner commander, Thrasios Jessica. This is actually a budget deck and uses a variety of different combos to get the win. But without further ado, let's get on to the gameplay. Shadow starts off the game with a Crystal Vein and a Mox Diamond. He discards a Scalding Tarn and doesn't stop as a Lotus Petal follows. He then cracks the vein and the pedal to power out a turn 1 Grolnok, and ends his turn with a jeweled amulet. Hidden as an undergrowth stadium, and while not as impressive as a turn 1 as Grolnok, he does have a Mardu Shadow Spear. English has a den of the bugbear, and decides that the frog is bad news, as he casts a Rite of Flame to help cast on a braid, to which Shadow slams down a fierce guardianship to keep his frog alive. And then English finishes his turn off with a Rograk. I will play Rograk because I can't. Just so there's slightly more on the battlefield when you kill us. <laughs> Roger. What? I'm, kill you? I'm gonna mill three guards next turn. I just assume you always have the Hermit Druid when when you're when someone's playing Frog. Even if I did, it wouldn't have haste, and I only have one mana. Jake plays a Command Tower as land, but doesn't have a turn one plate and passes it over. Shadow untaps and heads straight to combat. He sends his Frog at English and on attack mills three cards, with a Bloom Tender and Eternal Witness being exiled to Croak Counters. English takes the hit, and on his second main, Shadow Brainstorms to draw three and put two back. He does find a Waterlogged Grove off the top and uses it for a Boreal Druid. Hidden also has a Command Tower and cast Belby, before heading to combat and sending his Shadow Spirit English. The on attack pings the table for one, and English takes the hit. Add his second main, hit and then get 6 mana off Belbic, and uses 3 of it for a static orb to hopefully slow this game down a bit. English untaps and plays a mountain, which gets tapped for a goblin welder, and he ends his turn striking it rich for a treasure. Jake has a botanical sanctum and taps it for a Thrasios. Shadow starts off with combat and sends his frog at hidden this time, with the druid going at English. But with the mill trigger still on the stack, Hidden responds with a deadly rollick on the frog. And it was fortunate he did, as Shadow then mills a Gaius Cradle and a Spell Seeker, with English then taking the one off the Druid. Shadow does, however, get two mana from Belbe, which he uses on a Talisman of Curiosity, and then plays a Wooded Foothills as land. Hidden untaps and plays a Tarnished Citadel as land. He unfortunately is a little short on mana for what he had in his hand, and proceeds to combat. He sends the Shadow Spirit Shadow to again drain the table for one. It then gets his mana on his second main, but has nothing to cast with it, and passes. English starts off with a Faithless Looting to draw and discard two, following it up with a Mountain and an inactive Mox Opal. He has nothing else, and at his end step, Shadow cracks his fetch for a Tropical Island. Jake has an Island for turn, and plays one of his budget all-stars of the deck, Zeta Sanctuary. Shadow draws, but has nothing he wants to do, and hands it over to Hidden. Hidden starts off with a carpet of flowers. 
Not that it produces much mana right now, but he then heads the combat. The Shadow Spear heads it English and pings the table, with English taking another one from not blocking. On his second main, Hidden activates his carpet for a black and six colors from Belby. He then takes three from his citadel for more black and uses it to cast the Micaeus, the Unhallowed. English draws but doesn't like what he sees, as he spends three mana to flash back the Faithless Looting to draw and discard another two cards. He then follows that with a Phyrexian Walker to finally turn on his Mox Opal. He decides it's now time for Dargo and taps the Opal for a red before welding it out for the recently discarded Ruby Medallion. He then sacrifices his treasure for a red and this is actually now enough for the now cost reduced Dargo to come out. Jake untaps and draws and discards an extra card from his Sanctuary. He discards a Teemer Sabertooth and then plays a Hinterland Harbor as land, and taps out for a Green Sun Zenith, where X equals 2 to go find a Bloom Tender. No one has any responses, but at his end step, Shadow does put a charge counter on his amulet. Shadow untaps, but's not sure what he needs to do. He can tap out for his frog, but this does leave him open for English, sending Dargo his way, which would be lethal with Jessica, and force him to have to chump with the frog ultimately defeating the purpose of casting the commander. But after voicing that, English does say he's a little more worried about Hidden, and the frog ultimately does get cast. Hidden untaps, but doesn't like everyone now as blockers. He decides it's worth it for the mana, and sends a Shadow Spirit English, picking in the table for one. English does debate whether or not Hidden has a trick up his sleeve, and decides to just block it with a Phyrexian Walker, and let the Shadow Spear survive. On Hidden's second main, he gets 6 colorless and activates his carpet for another black, which he uses along with some of his floating colorless to cast a culling ritual, to wipe most of the board and get him 13 mana, which he separates into 7 black and 6 green. Also, I do need to point out there was a mistake that happens as Hidden thought Micaeus brought back everything and he forgot about the whole non-human part with Undying. So he brings back both the Belby and the Shadow Spear back from the grave. He then follows this up by using the Floating Colorless and a Black to catch Tevis Sot. The Walker resolves and is then upticked to sacrifice Belby for 3 cards, as Hidden is just looking for the win now. He draws the 3 and unfortunately does not find the win. Instead he finds an Assassin's Trophy for Dargo, which resolves and gives English an untapped mountain. Hidden has a Bloodstained Mire as land and then cast a Necrotic Ooze from his hand, which does have Jake's Teamer Sabertooth's ability. So here's where the error does come into play, as Hidden then uses the Sabertooth's ability to bounce and replay the Shadow Spear, even though it should have been dead. Although to be honest, this was a bad play, as he should have just recast Belby. Hidden then cracks his fetch for a Bayou, and uses the last of his floating mana to abrupt decay Jake's Cedar Sanctuary, and with that, he's finally done with his turn. English moves to his turn and untaps, but doesn't have anything and passes. With Jake having a very similar turn as he untaps, draws, and just passes. Shadow on the other hand at least has his frog, which is turned sideways at Jake. The attack trigger mills a jeweled lotus, gilded drake, and phantasmal image into exile with croak counters. Jake takes the hit and on his second main, Shadow casts the lotus and plays a city of traitorous land for turn. He then casts the exiled gilded drake forcing Hidden to respawn with a Veil of Summer. And with the last of his colored mana, Shadow casts an Exiled Bloom Tender. Hidden untaps and realizes now that he never recast Belly, he's actually hurting for mana due to his Static Orb. Hidden then heads to combat and sends Micaeus, the Ooze, and the Shadow Spirit Shadow, with everyone taking one off the Shadow Spear attack trigger. And on his second main, he upticks Tevish to sacrifice the Shadow Spear to draw two and plays a forest's land, and taps 3 for an eternal witness. Hidden still hasn't realized the whole non-human clause for Micaeus, and ends up taking a Veil of Summer back to hand from the witness, thinking he would be able to block and bring something else back when it died, and came back. English finds a mountain off the top, and at this point the table finds out about the human clause, and Hidden puts the Shadow Spear back in the grave. English then taps 3 from Jessica, and down ticks her for 2, to kill the witness, damage Tevish, and finally ping Hidden. And oh man is Hidden's lead quickly disappearing before the new pressure from the table 
and his own misplays. Jake has an exotic orchard as land and decides to buy force the Lotus and Static Orb before ending his turn with a Rattleclaw Mystic. Shadow untaps everything and heads to combat. The frog heads at Tevish and this time mills a Hermit Druid and two counter spells. The walker then goes down to one and on a second main, Shadow has a Mana Crypt. But responding to this, English casts a Pyroblast to kill the frog and stop the Druid from coming out. However, Shadow does have a response as he flashes in a Snapcaster Mage and flashes back to Swansong to stop the Pyro and give English a bird. Shadow then ends his turn tapping his Bloom Tender for two to cast the Hermit Druid and put the target back on Shadow. Hidden draws and starts by upticking Tevish to three for some thralls. He did have a Tangle Wire in his hand but decides it's not the right time and instead casts a Sylvan Library just passing after that. I get to untap all my lands. Oh god. It is, it is not better than just casting Jessica. <laughs> I will put Jessica on the stack. Yeah, I don't have a response. Not, not okay, but I can't do it. Jessica is then down ticked for three to kill Tevish, the frog, and the druid. Jake on his turn transmutes a Drift of Phantasm for a Malcolm Keen Eye Navigator and ends his turn casting the pirate. Shadow starts off by taking 3 from his mana crypt, and has a pretty simple turn by just recasting Grolnok. Hidden Sylvans, and takes 4 to keep an extra card. He has a mana confluence his land, and uses his ooze for mana to help cast a regal behemoth. He becomes the monarch, and taps a land for a fiend artisan, to hopefully set up the win for the next turn. He then ends his turn with combat, sending the case at Shadow for 5. I will untap. Draw a card. Yeah, this is this is monumentally terrible, but <laughs> it, it's you know it's a bad draw too. Seems about right for mono red. I'm gonna flashback strike it, Rich, to make it plunge. <laughs> Yikes! We're at that point. Oh no, it gets better. Two more. It's a galvanic relay. Thomas two. <laughs> he ends up exiling an ornithopter and a cavern of souls. English then ends his turn, sending his bird at Hidden for two, and more importantly, getting an extra draw off the Monarch at his end step. Jake untaps, and as a Sulphur falls his land, he then taps his Mystic for mana, and sacrifices it for an Eldritch Evolution to find a Glithorn and win on attack. Game Review Man, who says budget decks can't win? This was a sick game that really could have gone to anyone. There was one consideration that Hidden should have Tangle Wired on his last turn to stop Jake from winning, but he was hoping that he didn't have the Glinthorn, and with the Fiend Artisan wrote, he would have been able to hold up Veil of Summer. Although Hidden didn't know how bad English was out of the game at this point, and as it ended up with no one being able to stop Jake. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I just wanted to let you know that we have a TCG affiliate link, and if you ever see a card you want to try, or inspired to brew something new, use our link when purchasing and will receive a small portion of the sale. This is a great way to support the channel, and if you enjoyed the gameplay, please leave a like and subscribe, as it really helps us keep making videos. And remember, never give up, even if you're dead on board. I'll see you guys later.